All right, guys, today we're going to be doing a going into the new year state of the collection. And in this video, I'm going to break into two pieces, but it'll be in the same video talking about fixed blades and pocket knives. So the first one in the far larger um, amount of knives is going to be the pocket knives. So we're going to be going over what the state of the collection looks like at this current time. And of course, talking about some additions that I want to add. So without any further ado, guys, this one's going to be a little bit longer, but let's jump into the beginning of the new year what the collection looks like all right so let's just jump right into it this is in no order either so everyone who's ocd will definitely be freaking out <laughs> let's jump into it okay so the first one we're going to talk about is the crkt large pilar with the custom carbon fiber flytanium scales so this guy is really a nice little blade i don't think that the carbon fibers as much for like making it lightweight because it is a steel frame lock but it's just a really cool blade the pilar is one of crkt's few designs that really excites me really entices me and and is genuinely enjoyable. So this is, like I said, the CRKT Large Pilar. All right, next one up is going to be the Benchmade 535 Bug Out. Now, I've also had this one for quite some time. This is the Benchmade exclusive in JG10 um, and 20 CV blade steel. Really hard to beat for a super lightweight and kind of workout slash running oriented blade. That's what I carry mine for and the reason I have it. But yeah, super smooth opening and honestly, really not a half bad knife. All right, now let's jump into this first row. So the first row, we got the Kershaw CQC6 in D2. Now this is the Emerson collaboration and I really like it. I've kind of been on an Emerson collab kick and slash just Emerson knives, I should say. Anything with a wave feature that looks like an Emerson, I've been really liking. So I added this one and two real Emersons to the collection at about the same time. But yeah, and overall, I will say I'm pretty blown away for a knife that is sub $50, sometimes sub $40, that it offers a lot of value for what you're getting. All right, next up is going to be the automatic Benchmade Adamus. And so this is the 2750. And this is, like I said, the Auto Adamus. This is the modern version in CPM Crewwear, running that tan slash gray Cerakote. And this guy, I don't carry too, too frequently, but it is one of my choices for a solid outdoor knife. It's not the easiest to close one handed, but can be done. And man, it just fires so hard. It's hard to express over video just how hard this guy fires but it is a really cool blade all right next couple autos up we got the uh, microtech ultratech this is an older version 2015 with the tri-grip uh, handles and of course double edged dagger fully serrated top fully non-serrated bottom in lmax steel so that is that guy then next up we have a, another similar blade and this is a double-edged um, dagger style blade but plain edge and this is the g10 handle or g10 show side with a black aluminum this is of course is a signature series and is a usn blade so this one it should also be noted is an m390 whereas the other one's in l max so a little bit fancier a little bit upgraded next one up is the old Sebenza 21 and this is one that I've had for quite some time. I really do love having Sebenzas in my um, collection because they're just so nice and classy and I really do enjoy them. So like I said this is a large Sebenza 21 with micarta inlays, CPM S35VN steel and of course a Tonto tip. Next up is a similar knife um, in age, but is my Strider SMG. Now this is a pretty plain Jane SMG with the Gunner Grip G10 and a nice tiger striped S30V blade. So overall pretty classic. It's a real staple in the Strider kind of market. And overall, just a really nice blade. Super fun to Spidey flick too. Uh, just a really nice blade. A lot of people call these things outdated and old school, but uh, I do not think that is the case. I really like my Striders. Um, 
Next one up is once again in the Chris Reeve family, and this is the large Nkosi with micarta inlays. So very similar to the Sabenza, but this one of course is in just a standard drop point. And uh, this one is made, it should be noted, out of S45VN. This was gotten during, the, during their limited stint using S45. They now use MagnaCut, I believe it is. Um, but yeah, when Sabenz, or Chris Reeve was kind of figuring out, you know, like what steel they wanted to move to next, one of their options was S45. So that is what this guy is made in. Really pretty blade and really nice overall. All right, next one up is another old school blade. Um, I haven't had for too long. I think I've had this one for about three years, and this is the Benchmade Large Skirmish, um, and this is the 630. So 630 denotes that it is a standard or large skirmish. And, <coughs> and as you guys can probably tell, and as you guys can probably tell, it is pretty darn large. This is definitely a full-sized titanium blade with S30V as the blade steel. All right, next, one, next ones up are going to be my Hinder XM18 3 inch. So this is the smaller version. This guy is in S35VN as well. And uh, this one's just a little bit of an older, um, older Hinder. It is also rocking that classic or traditional Spanto tip that Hinder is well known for. And yeah, it's just a really standard. I love this guy. It's super pocket friendly. It's one of my favorite blades to carry. And yeah, it's just a really nice higher end uh, Hinder that is also super pocket friendly. So that is that guy. And then next to that one is one of my favorite knives in the collection, arguably my favorite of them all. And that is my large or Hinder XM18 three and a half inch blade. And this one, got, this one has a custom purple G10 handle scale on it. And it has a purple liner and then just has blue accents on this side. Now the blade itself is a CPM 20 CV and it is in the recurve blade shape. And recurves, if you haven't noticed, you'll probably notice in this video, are one of my favorite blade shapes on a knife. I have four um, EDC blades that have recurves. So it's definitely a solid, um, favorite for me. This one's also worth noting that it runs on skiff ball bearings, so it is very smooth. But anyways, that is this guy right here. And that completes my hinders. All right, so moving into the smaller... <laughs> All right, moving down the line to this lineup, let's jump into it. So next we have a Emerson Minicom or Mini Commander. Once again, this is a relatively new knife to me, but it is an older knife being made in 2009. And it is just a classic Emerson design. And there's not too much to be said about it. It uses 154 CM for its blade steel, has G10 handles. And yeah, just an overall classic blade. Really do like it. I will say on my all of my Emersons, I have these Ranger beads as lanyards, primarily because I feel like these Emersons are really tactical, really militaristic, and I like the uh, ranger pace beads on there um, as a lanyard because one i guess you could use them as pace beads but i think it kind of fits the military aesthetic of these blades so all my hand or all my emerson sorry have pace beads on them all right next one up is a benchmade 56 mini grip this is an older school version in 154 cm blade steel with cyan or blue um, handles on it. And this is all factory, nothing aftermarket aside from my little lanyard on here. And I just like it. It's colorful. It's a little bit of a, a spice from the rest of the largely metal looking blades and handles, I should say. Next one up is the Cutlery Shop exclusive version of the Paramilitary 2 in CPM Rex 45. It is rocking the OD Green G10 all right, so they're the same. This is the color exclusive or color shop exclusive CPM Rex 45 Paramilitary 2. So pretty cool. And I just wanted a uh, Paramilitary 2 that wasn't the exact same. It was a little bit different. So yeah. Anywho, moving on to it, we got a Plain Jane CPM S30V Para 3 with black G10 handles. This guy's just a cool user. It is stonewashed and pretty smooth. Not as smooth as my Paramilitary 2. That's because I think the uh, stonewashed um, blade is not as slick. Anywho, 
that is that guy. Moving on, we also have a single-edged Microtech Ultratech here, and this one I've kind of retrofitted. I backed the bevel down to a 17 per side degree angle to make this a little bit more slicey, because I really do like my Microtech Ultratechs, but I think anyone that has used, carried these blades, even the single-edged versions, will know that the bevel on these is very abrupt, so the edge itself is actually usually pretty sharp, but it's not as slicey as it could be. So this guy's made out of L-Max and just aluminum handles, nothing too fancy on this one, but uh, definitely worth having in the collection. All right, I, this is an Emerson CQC8 Mini or Horseman, and I added this one at the same time as my Minicom. And once again, another really great um, Emerson, just a really good model that they made, and I like it. Something worth noting is this guy has a 762 by 39 um, what is it like case end on this guy as the thumb disc so pretty cool little touch on there that's kind of you know unique to this knife but outside of that 154 cm blade steel and just yeah g10 handles liner lock the usual and of course like i said pace beads Okay, moving up or moving on is the ZT0462 in carbon fiber and titanium. Now mine is the Starburst or has the Starburst kind of aftermarket anodizing to the titanium. Kind of makes it unique and one of a kind, but really just a good user. I like this one quite a bit. It is in CPM 20 CV blade steel and just a very, very slicey knife. This is another one that's similar to my Microtech Ultratech. I laid back that bevel, so hopefully you guys can see here uh, if the camera will focus. Um, Let's see if it will focus, but anyways, so I laid back this bevel and it is not as shiny or as mirror polished as some of my other grinds or regrinds, but it is super slicey. All right, speaking of super slicey, we got the Spyderco Spidey Chef in LC200N. And what more can I say about this guy? It is just a super nice EDC. You can just barely Spidey flick it if you try. And it's actually a very smooth blade um, as far as action goes. Just kind of hard to Spidey flick because of the um, frame lock that gets in the way. But aside from that, it's a very nice unobtrusive or like non-threatening blade to carry and really, really stinking good at food prep and just general EDC tasks. All right, closing up the folder side of things, we got the Benchmade 550 Griptilian full-sized. I do not run a pocket clip on this one. Um, this one doesn't see as much carry time as it had in the past, but it's just a really solid Griptilian, hard to go wrong with. This is the combo edge um, because I got this guy so many years ago, back when I thought combo edges were cool. <laughs> Anywho, now closing out the folders is the Benchmade 273 Mini Adamus. This one, much like the other two mentioned, I have uh, reprofiled that bevel, laid it back to a 17 degree per side angle, which gosh, this lighting is so bad at picking that up. But anyways, this one has a dull mirror polish on it. It is pretty darn sharp, so I really like it. And of course, it is in that avocado colorway of FDE for the blade and a nice OD green, OD green G10 handle. So anyways, very smooth, very tuned up and overall just a really nice knife if it wasn't for the locking mechanism being really sketchy. All right, I'm gonna replace all these blades with the fixed blades and then I'll be back. All right, so a pretty stark contrast here between the 20 something folders that I just showed. I only have four mainstay EDC fixed blades. Now, it is worth noting if you've been around the channel at all, I am seriously into outdoor knives as well. So I do have a pretty sizable collection of outdoor knives, but this is specifically the EDC fixed blades. And so for this, we're gonna be covering just the EDC blades or fixed blades that I use for those types of tasks and scenarios. So this one kind of even crosses the line or balances on the line. And 
I have another blade, the SE3, that kind of goes back and forth, but predominantly, these are just it. So anyways, let's talk about them. So first up is the Half Face Blades Extremis Mark I. Now you'll notice a trend that most of my EDC fixed blades tend to be more defensive as opposed to utilitarian, and that's primarily because it's the role that I would use fixed blades in for EDC or like having them there. I mean, this guy is like the extremist too. It would be a good balance of like defensive slash, um, you know, like box opener, if you will. But overall, th this does lean more towards like the tactical slash defensive. Anyways, this is a half face blades extremist mark one. The thing that makes this one a little bit different or stands out, makes it itself kind of unique, is it is S45 VN as opposed to the S35 VN they normally use for these. And of course, it is in the limited edition red and black colorway. So anyways, this guy's a little bit unique and special. It's just a limited edition Extremis. Next one up is the Topps Ice Dagger. And once again, very much a defensive blade. This is not like a box cutter type of thing. I mean, it could be, it's certainly durable enough. And uh, yeah, it, it could do that. But realistically, this is a double-edged dagger. So you're gonna be, you know, like potentially using this more for self-defense. Anywho, this is the Topps Ice Dagger. Next one up is going to be the Pull Force November 1. This is another one I've tuned up on my um, Edge, or Wicked Edge, not Edge Pro Apex, but Wicked Edge. And um, I believe I laid this one back. I can't remember if I re-beveled it or not. I may not have, it doesn't look like it's super shallow. So maybe this one is like a 22 degree angle. Anywho, this one is also tuned up. And once again, this is a Pull Force November 1 and it is in Nylox, which is basically a European counterpart to D2 tool steel. It's also worth noting that this guy is in 1095 high carbon. Okay, last one up on the list of knives, as we've talked about so many, is the Browse Blades Silent Soldier V2 in drop point. So they made many of these different guys, uh, many of these different little um, Silent Soldiers over the years. Of course, these are no longer made. They are all made in D2 tool steel, just like this guy. But I think that this is probably my favorite of all the V2 Silent Soldiers, just because it has the most utilitarian blade. It's not super like tactical or anything, but you could definitely easily choke up on it, get very good control for like opening boxes or packages. And that's really what I think makes this guy stand out. It's super compact and easy to carry for a fixed blade. As you can see, it's actually just about the size of the handle of this November 1 in its total overall length. So pretty cool. It is definitely a little bit eccentric with how you hold it, um, being that it is kind of like you're you know putting your fingers through the blade but it does work really well super functional and yeah it just makes a really good edc knife and personally i like the designs of the browse blade silent soldier so anyways guys those are the fixed blades like i said there's not as many fixed blades here because um i just don't tend to carry fixed blades too often when it comes to um, EDC tasks. I just like my folders because they're usually easier and more streamlined to carry. And actually, I almost forgot one. So technically that makes it five. I should say the Civivi Elementum fixed blade is one of them. Can't believe I almost forgot this guy. Uh, so yeah, the Civivi Elementum, this one's also in D2 tool steel, but is another EDC fixed blade. For me, I will say I really like the um, Elementum because it is just a very classic and really streamlined design as far as like EDC fixed blades go. Uh, it's not super obtrusive or super tactical looking like these guys here. It's just a very nice, uh, very clean um, blade overall. So once again, this one is in D2 tool steel. So yeah. Anyways, guys, there we go. Five fixed blades for EDC. <laughs> and that is the state of the collection for 2023, going into 2023, I should say. So hopefully you enjoyed the video, guys. As always, God bless, and I'm out.